So the case that um, we're going to talk about was published in, <laughs> I'm going to land the plane now. Now we're going back to JOSP's, JOSPT's musculoskeletal imaging feature. And um, the title is Cervical Fracture with Posterior Ligamentous Injury While Skydiving. And the uh, authors are um, military uh, physicians in the U.S., uh, Warren Flout, Robert Rowland, and Richard Westrick. So just an excellent case. The story starts with a 46-year-old male soldier going to an emergency department with severe neck pain after he was doing some recreational skydiving. And on one of his jumps, he had an unusually rapid parachute opening, which caused him to have a hyperflexion, like a whiplash injury. So in the emergency department, he had radiographs. They were negative for fracture, and he was released with a diagnosis of acute neck strain. So very common, right? That's our bread and butter type of patient. And they get sent to um, his PCP, you know, how they always they give some meds and say follow up with your primary care provider. He saw the primary care provider a week later, and the primary care provider referred him to therapy because he was still having severe neck pain. So the physical therapist evaluation finds very exquisite tenderness with light palpation over C5 and C6 spinous process, and the patient is unable to actively rotate his neck more than 45 degrees bilaterally. So that sounds familiar, right? We're hearing yes. that with the C-spine. Yep. So the patient had no neurologic symptoms, no radiating pain. Uh, the whole neurologic exam was unremarkable. So we expect this patient to have, at a week out, after serious whiplash type uh, mechanism, we expect them to have pain, but we don't expect them to have pain that's still a 10. It should be getting better, uh, at least going in the right direction. And this pain is not so the physical therapist um, is able to refer for radiographs, and he does. Um, remember, the first ones were negative, but the therapist applies the Canadian cervical spine rule. When you have severe pain, midline tenderness, and can't rotate 45 degrees, you need radiographs, despite what the first radiographs showed. And of course, uh, that's when everything's revealed. He, um, he has bilateral fractures of uh, the C6 lamina and uh, the, um, the lateral x-ray, you can see a, a fanning of the spinous process between five and six, which you infer, you don't see directly on a radiograph, but you infer by joint positioning that those ligaments are torn. So um, if you go to the ACR then um, and look, let's see, I'll tell you exactly. If you look at what bearing would be next on this decision tree. Um, the first variant is always initial imaging indicated by nexus or CCR, and that's what the patient had. That would be variant two under the topic suspected spine trauma. And then um, after the acute cervical spine injury is detected, variant four you would pick would be treatment planning for the mechanically unstable spine. And the, the two imaging studies that are recommended are CT um, and or MRI. And this patient had both of them. And of course, he ended up with um, open reduction and in, uh, internal fixation with um, uh, ligamentous repair. And he did well. And he was back to uh, full deployment in eight months. So the interesting thing about this case was that the physical therapist acted correctly. They referred correctly. And a um, point of uh, maybe disagreement among my colleagues and myself is I don't believe it is critical that therapists read images. What I believe is critical is that they know when to refer. And this uh, physical therapist did exactly the right thing. They did not let the prior imaging report um, biased them and did what was correct. They reordered the radiographs. And that's, you know, you could have gone right to CT, but it's always better to use the most um, least invasive and 
um, least expensive imaging study first. That's just kind of a general principle. And then, of course, he went to CT and MR as was appropriate as indicated by the radiograph. So that's um, the, the kind of case I love because it teaches us to trust our clinical skills. And no matter how wonderful and um, technical all our tools are getting, nothing replaces looking at the patient, um, observing, palpating. Those are the skills that I think it feels like sometimes we're the only ones left who do that with the patient and um, certainly is what our value is as professionals.